Meta recently released its new state-of-the-art text-to-image model called Chameleon that is not based on diffusion like Stable Diffusion, Midjourney, or Dali. It's a retrieval augmented autoregressive decoder-only model. Quite a mouthful, but in this video we'll get to know what all that means. At this point we already know that current image generation models can generate amazing images, but still have certain limitations. For example, the efficiency and cost of those models. Or generating hands, but not with Chameleon, which the authors appear to be very proud of. The generation itself is cool, but what this autoregressive decoder-only approach also enables are image-to-text capabilities. But okay, first let's have a closer look at the results and why Chameleon is so special. We already looked at nicely generated images, but when we look at the numbers, we can really see how much better Chameleon is than other models such as Dali and Party. Now one can argue how well the FID score actually captures the realism of the generated image, but nevertheless Chameleon sets a new state-of-the-art FID score on the MS Coco dataset. Where I do have to say, choosing the autoaggressive version of the Dali model is a bit unfair. Just on a small tangent, Dali has an intermediate model called the Prior that maps the text embedding generated by Clip to a corresponding image encoding that is then used for generating the final image using diffusion. This Prior can again be a diffusion process or an autoaggressive one. Both appear to yield similar results, but the diffusion process is more efficient, so the authors of Dali went with that one. So yeah, choosing the less efficient version for the comparison here might be a bit unfair for Dali. Now, okay, the nice FID score alone is great, but even better is that Chameleon achieves this performance while being a lot more efficient. With its largest 7 billion parameter model, it is way smaller than the largest party model and it uses a fraction of the training data and time. Also, the authors introduce a new metric for responsible training. The images used for training Chameleon are all licensed from Shutterstock, so hopefully no more fear of lawsuits. Then there is the column Number of Retrieved Documents, which is one of the main features of the Chameleon model that makes it so great and we'll get to know more about what that is in a second. But in short, given a text prompt, the model can somehow retrieve relevant images or even text from a memory bank and use it as further context for the image generation process. Now, the thing that does make me wonder is that if the model retrieves further images for the generation process, is it really zero-shot generation? I guess the model itself retrieves the extra images and they are not provided by the person prompting the model, but yeah, I'm not 100% sure here. Okay, up until now it was all about image generation, but since this model is an autoregressive decoder-only model, pretty much like all big LLMs, it can also interpret images as normal tokens and use it as context for text generation. In other words, after applying supervised fine-tuning, or for short SFT, our model can also do more complex multimodal tasks. It is very good at interleaved text and image tasks, such as text-guided editing and image-to-image -image grounded generation, where you can provide a segmentation map, sketch with just outlines, or even a depth map, and based on those and a text prompt, the new image is generated or with spatially grounded image generation, you can even provide the coordinates of an object in the text prompt and the generated image will place that object at those coordinates. On top of that, the model is quite good at actually generating text in images, which was not the case for a while. And by a while, I literally mean one or two years ago. Finally, with the correct supervised fine-tuning, Chameleon can also take images as input and do tasks like image captioning with short or long answers, visual question answering, and reasoning. It still is not as good as dedicated image captioning models like Flamingo, but since this is more or less just a side effect of the model design, the results are still very cool. Okay, sick. But how does Chameleon work and what does Retrieval Augmented Autoregressive Decoder-Only Model mean? At this point we all more or less know how diffusion works. A model is trained to predict noise in an image so that when we start with completely random noise, we can apply this model and remove the noise step by step. This noise removal process can now also be conditioned on text so that we can guide the generation process with our prompt. 
autoregressive models work a bit differently. Let's have a look at how Party implements this idea of an autoregressive image generation model. Remember how autoencoders work? We have an encoder network that maps an image to some embedding so that the decoder can then generate the same image only from a latent vector representation. Now, what if those embeddings the decoder, in the case of Party called detokenizer, uses for generating the image come in form of tokens predicted by a language model? Think of how a GPT model starts with a simple start of sequence token and predicts the next token, or rather token embedding, out of a given vocabulary in the known autoregressive fashion. A vision transformer also generates embeddings for each patch token of the image, and those can also be constrained to be from a certain vocabulary. That means that our autoregressive text decoder can also generate each image embedding token and then let the image decoder, again here it calls detokenizer, generate the image. Now to condition the image token generation process, Party goes with an encoder-decoder approach. It uses the full transformer architecture for what it was originally designed, translating text. In this case, simply translating the language of text into the language of images, or text tokens into image tokens. In other words, they use cross-attention, where the text encoder embeddings are used as conditioning for the text decoder that predicts one image token after the other. This autoregressive approach solves some issues that diffusion models had. For example, autoregressive models can much better deal with long text prompts and can generate text in images very well, but it can only do so with scale. The case of simply go bigger and it will work is quite extreme here. For example, we can look at this example with the kangaroo and the text welcome. Okay, we now know how autoregressive image generation works. But Chameleon is an autoregressive decoder-only model and not an encoder-decoder model like Party. What that pretty much means is that the text conditioning for the generation process happens not via an encoder and cross-attention, but as simple text tokens in the decoder context. That means that the vocabulary now has to include the image token vocabulary, where the authors use an already existing tokenizer, and the text token vocabulary, where the authors train a new tokenizer themselves. Additionally, the authors introduce a new break token that indicates a transition in modalities. Now our decoder input and output can look something like this, where we start with a prompt a photo of a cat shown on a DSLR, followed by the break token. And the decoder then predicts the next image tokens one by one. Once we reach another break or end of sequence token, the image decoder can take over and generate the image. When it comes to training data, the model can handle multimodal cases, such as image of a chameleon, followed by the image tokens where the model is simply trained on the standard next token prediction loss. But this also means that the model can handle image captioning tasks by simply reformatting the same example to mask a certain part of the sample and expect the model to predict the masked part after the infill request. In other words, the model sees the image and has to predict what the image contains. Our model can now generate both images and text. So autoregressive, check. Decoder only, Check. Finally, how does this retrieval augmentation thing work? I already mentioned that this pretty much just means that given the initial prompt, the model can retrieve either images or text, or both, and it adds it to its context. Since we now know how the input to the decoder-only model works, we can pretty easily understand how simple it is to just add more images and text to the context. We can simply add as much text and images sitting in between break tokens as the maximum context length allows. And with a sequence length of 4096, we should be okay to add one or two retrieved documents. Documents hereby refer to elements that can be a single image or text, or an image and caption pair. Chameleon builds a lot on the RACM3 paper that proposed to add this retrieval augmentation feature to the method proposed in the CM3 paper. Now that's research, one paper building on the other. In the RACM3 paper, we can very nicely see the effects of retrieving an image for a given text prompt. Here, for example, we can see some outputs to the prompt French flag waving on the moon's surface, where the vanilla CM3 without retrieval and stable diffusion simply place the American flag on the moon. But if we now add an retrieved image of the French flag to the context, 
RACM3 generates a proper result. Similar effects are seen when retrieving two images and so on. This of course also allows you to specify an image manually to control the style of the generated image, as we can see here in this example. Providing an image of a person with a red jacket will also lead to the model in painting a person with a red jacket. Cool, so how does this retrieval work? The idea is actually really simple. The authors use an off-the-shelf frozen clip model to encode the input query, for example a simple text prompt, and sorts similar candidates from a memory bank by a relevance score. The individual text and image examples in the memory bank simply pass through the clip model once, but for the image and caption documents, the authors split the text and image, encode them separately, and then average the two as a vector representation of the whole document. The authors don't simply select the most similar document, but use different heuristics to make the retrieval more informative. For example, a document consisting of image and text is more informative than only text or only image or they skip a candidate document if it is too similar to the query or if the pretty much same document has already been retrieved. And a few other tricks. There are even more other minor details to make the model output itself work even better. But those are no fundamental new ideas, just add-on tricks that generally appear to improve performance. For example, randomly sampling different temperature values or something called top P sampling, applying classifier-free guidance during inference or their own adaptation of contrastive decoding. So in the end, we now know how this retrieval augmented autoregressive decoder only chameleon model works and what it can do. This retrieval idea is a key contributor to the fact that the model is so parameter and thus data efficient. The model does not have to memorize the whole world's information like what is a cherry blossom tree or Mount Rushmore and what do they look like. And using a decoder-only architecture makes the training and fine-tuning to new tasks much easier. After potentially thinking diffusion models are the best way to go for image generation, this paper just again shows how powerful autoregressive models such as the famous transformer models are for a broad range of text and image tasks. And if you want to see how powerful transformers are in combination with self-supervised learning, I would recommend you to watch this dino paper explanation video or just start with the first video of my self-supervised learning series. Bye!